cosine of 45. Sines and the cosines right there, the x and the y values. Uh, how do we find its tangent at any angle? The sine over the cosine. So we, there's a little bit more work involved here. We need to go to 60 degrees, the pi over 3 radians, the same thing, and find the tangent. We take the sine over the cosine. There's 60 degrees right there. So what is sine over the cosine? Very good. So we take root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Uh, and we know we're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. Right? We're going to multiply by 2. So we over here. Root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. 2 to cancel. Root 3. Uh, of course, this is all stuff that we already know about. We know how to find the sine and cosine and tangent. We're learning about a different kind of a function today, and I think this is a, a helpful way to start out. For instance, this is a sine function. I can put it 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 120 degrees, whatever I want. And this function will then say, okay, so 30 degrees, what's the sine of 30 degrees? It's one half. One half is the output. It's going to tell you that's the result and the answer. So we're going to learn about another function, the inverse of these functions. And inverse functions always do the same kind of thing, they just always go in reverse. Let's come over here and start. So, just in fairly simple language, we just want you to use your inner circle to find these two things. Find the angle of the sine of one half, find the angle of the sine of cosine of that, find the angle of that. So, we're going to tell now the angle that half. Got this one? Sine one half, which I call it sine one half. Mm -hmm. Do you find an angle that has a cosine of the two? 45. And one that has a tangent of root 3? 60. So when you look at it that way, like you read that sentence, exactly what we're being asked by the inverse function. This one right here. This would be the inverse sine of one half. So, a uh, common confusion here is that this means one over the sine. Doesn't mean that. It means the inverse sine. Means if I give you the sine of one half, find the angle it has that sine. So, when you see this, it's saying exactly this sentence: okay. find an angle that has the sine of one half. This one too. Uh, find an angle that has a cosine of root two over two. When we write that with math symbols, is cosine basically negative one of root two over two. It just means find the angle that has a cosine of root two over two. And here, inverse tangent. And is the negative one root three means find the angle that has a cosine of root All right. So let's, uh, I'm just going to quiz you a little bit, see if you understand what we just got over. We're going to have you evaluate some. Here, you can tell me inverse sine of hundred twenty degrees. It's an angle that has a sine of. Do we use? <laughs> well, that's that's 
going to be a problem because what we want is an inverse function. You know, this is like the very important thing about functions. Suppose the other one, one output for every input. Every time you put something in, you get one big out. Okay. So since we want it to be a function, using both becomes a problem. And if you think about it, there's not just two possibilities right now. Let's talk about here. 60 degrees has a sine of root 3 over 2. Okay? And so does 120. But also, what about 390? No, 420 degrees. Where's 420 degrees? You gotta do the uh, up here, look at the unit circle, right. and touch it. Right, 60, let's go around. After you go around 330 and go into the 60, that's 420. Yeah. So what's the sign of 420 degrees? It's also root 3 over 2. Remember coterminal angles? What we just did is 60, we added 360 to that, 420 for the coterminal angles, remember coterminal angles? Uh, and coterminal angles have the same sign. Okay? All that stuff. All those ratios are exactly the same. So there's another answer. And if we found coterminal angles of 420, there are another answer. How many answers does this thing have right now? You can find any angle that's coterminal to 60 or 120. You found an angle that has a sign of root 3 over 2. So we need to not have that happen. Okay. Any ideas on how to not have that happen? Yeah? If you use 60, you can use like the smaller one. So like 120, you have that as a sign, but it's like simplified. Okay. I like it. It's, what do you mean by simplified? Like, Fraction gets simplified or something? Well, like, it's bigger. 120 is bigger? Yeah, it's like double. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to be confusing at all. It's not just because 60 is like happens to be one half. Okay. So, yeah, 60 is simpler, it's smaller. Right? Given the choice between 120 and 60, my answer is 60 is nicer, we're used to it. You know, 60 degrees uh, in a triangle, sometimes in a right triangle, these are things we're kind of used to. Right? So given the choice between the two, yeah, we're going to choose 60. Okay? Uh, in the end, that's what happens. What, what your reasoning is, it's all kind of just up to you. If, if, as long as in the end your decision is, I'm going to use 60. That's going to be my one answer, my one output. That's how I'm going to make this thing function. Okay? That make sense? Um, so then, if we're going to choose 60 to be our one output, in this case, we think what's the sign, the other side, the inverse sign of root 2 over 2? Forty five. Is there another angle that has the sign of root 2 over 2? 135. And any other angle? Positive, negative, like any of these angles that are coterminal with 45 and 135, they're all, all of them that either are here or here, are going to have a sign of root 2 over 2. But our one answer that we pick as our output, so that we don't have a, a, a non function, we all those choices, we're going to choose 45. So if I put something in here, like where are you going to get your outputs from? Take your outputs from. We're looking at the unit circle. The first one. First quadrant from 0 to 90. Okay. And it gives you the sign of anything that you're going to choose from 0 to 90. Is that true though? Of anything that I put in here? Why do you say that? Um, like, what about if I put the inverse sign of negative one? What's the inverse sign of negative one? Mm -hmm. Ten. We go 
to uh, 210, it has a sign of negative one half. Anything else? Three thirty, also a valid or logical answer to this question. What angle has a sign of negative one half? If three thirty does, and when two ten does. Okay. Now, just so that we agree, as mathematicians, with all other mathematicians all over the world, at least, you know, at least on this planet, I don't know what they do on other planets, but on this planet, the one we agree to has got to be consistent. Okay. And it turns out we're not going to choose two ten or 330. Okay. And the reason is, instead of, instead of going all the way around through the first quadrant where we get some of our outputs, skipping these, like never using, like we don't want to use these, we just discussed how we want to use just these and that's it. And we don't want to, we're not going to use these and then come over here to 330 or, or use 210. You can see how like we'd be skipping over all of these angles, not using them, and then using these ones. It would be nicer if our answers came from like a, a nice, Low, continuous list. Does that make sense? So how many gaps in the list? How many gaps? Okay. We don't want to skip over these and then start using these. Or skip over all of this and start using these. So to make it nice and flowy, we'll choose for positive side values when we put positive numbers in there. We'll choose from here, from zero to ninety. And when we have negative side values, that's where we find the negative side values down here. We're just gonna Continue right past zero, go in a negative direction, and go down to negative 90. So all of the outputs for the inverse sine function are going to come from either zero to 90 or zero to negative 90. So the whole list of all of the angles that we might choose as outputs are going to be between 90, maybe equal to 90, greater than negative 90, maybe equal to negative So what's the inverse sine of one half now, or inverse sine of negative one half? Let's get back. Cool. How do you guys think? Well, I've got one right here. Negative thirty. This angle right here is thirty degrees down from the horizontal. We go in negative direction. Rather than saying three thirty, come down. That is the sine of negative one half. That will be our our all around the world one agreed upon outcome. Negative thirty degrees. About the inverse sine of negative one. Zero. This zero doesn't have a sign of two. That's just the sign of zero. What do you guys think? Why aren't you able to give me an answer? There's no two, right? Maybe we just didn't label it. Do you think that's possible? Like we didn't label all the people. Maybe there is an angle that has no. Why do you say no? One back. Oh, from, oh, I see what you mean. Like, 
The biggest it could be yeah. is one. Yeah. How are you so sure about that? Well, why would it go to like one and then it starts going down again? Yeah. Like the sign is the y value? Yeah. And, and this y value is like maxed out. Two is up here. Is there any point on the circle that's up here? Yeah. No, it's outside the circle. I mean, even if we have a circle that was bigger, the ratio of, remember that the ratio is for the sign, of the y value to the radius would still be 1. Right? So we double the radius, then the radius would be 2, but also the y value would be 2, and so 2 over 2 would be 1. No matter what, no matter how big the circle is, the sine of 90 is still 1, and 1 is the biggest sign you could possibly find. What do we say about the inverse sine of 2? Cross it out to say does not exist. Or the, the official math word would be undefined. There's no definition to the inverse sine of 2 because the inverse sine of 2 is going to be like uh, trying to divide by zero, or trying to take the natural log of zero, or natural log of zero, or negative numbers. There's just some things that don't work. Don't make any sense. There's just no way to make this happen. Let's think of it a different way. You see, that, like, there's just no way to get an angle at the sign of two. We're back to right triangles. When we look at this angle, what's the sign of this angle? I'm to figure out the sign of that angle. Somehow, to get a sign of 2, I just the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse and get 2. Let's just imagine some numbers that would work. Like, how about 8? If this is 8, what would this have to be so that opposite over hypotenuse is 2? Cool. Why doesn't that make sense? Hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle, and that's always the longest side. So, how can the longest side be shorter than the shorter side? Okay? Just not going to help. Well, that's the way it is. Sometimes when you put things into this function, nothing comes out because it doesn't make any sense. So, just like we talked about how there are, like, this, uh, you know, my outputs can come from here to here, from negative 90 to 90, our inputs, there's also a limitation on our inputs. Right? Our input, like x, well, it's got to be less than 1. 1. got to be less than 1 or equal to 1. And what's the smallest it could be? Negative. So coming down to negative 90, we have a negative 1 to the side. And no further. So this little picture here, if you look at the first page, 13.4, that is in this big rectangular box, like a, like a, a spiral bound notebook uh, illustration. That's what it's talking about. It's saying, we're only going to take our outputs from here. Why do we only? Why are we limiting ourselves? Why are we saying we'll only take our outputs from here? Because if we don't, what won't be a function. We don't limit ourselves. It won't be a function because we just let everybody run free and just pick any answer they want. They're all going to get tons of different answers. Some people are going to pick 120. Some people are going to pick 60. Some 420, this is all going to be great. And so we limit ourselves so that across the world we're all consistent. And we have a function now. We have only one output. Okay. And the inputs can only go from negative 1 to 1 because, well, we just saw how the like, inverse sine of 2 makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's see. Would you guys prefer to see how we might use the inverse sine for something or in have an inverse cosine function to do that research. Anybody care? Let's use the inverse sine function to see how we might use it. My simplest of examples just set up a triangle. Triangles are all naturally functions. Um, this is the angle that I want to know. This is 4 and so this is 7. Let's see what I know about this triangle. I only know this angle. I only know this is 90. I don't know any of the other angles. I don't know how big they are. And I want to know what this angle is. It's going to be kind of 
kind of like detectives and gather information about this angle. What is something that we know about this angle? What is its sign? Or, uh, or is it? It's sign. Okay. This angle, that we're looking for, we're trying to find an angle that has a sign of four sevens. Hopefully that sounds familiar. We're trying to find an angle that has a sign of four sevens. That's just like this sentence here. Find an angle that has a sign of one half. Well, replace one half with four sevens. And then business. So we're going to get into a sign of four sevens. Inverse sine of four sevens. Anybody tell me what the inverse sine of four sevens is? Check it out off your head. Man. I have that information memorized. You know, should, should you memorize that? So how are we going to find out? There you go. Calculators. I'll see the inverse trig function because at least the sign to be calculated, we should have that. You might put inverse sine of four sevens to get something like 0.6. What's going on there? That's not 0.6 degrees. It's 0.6 what? Radians. Make sure you know which mode you're in, because your calculator needs to know. It needs to know what your, your answer is going to be in radians or degrees. So we'll take the inverse sine of four sevens. change the mode to radians, and I do that again, I get that in radians. Is that the Okay. Let me just remind you of something real quick. If we're using the sine function, it's a very different function. Anyway, y equals the sine of x. What kind of stuff do you put right there? What kind of thing do you put into that function? Number of cantaloupe? kinds of things go into the sine function. What's that? Side lengths. Side lengths go, no, this, not the inverse sine function, the sine function. Oh, degree. Okay, that's a little too specific. The degree of the angle. The angle. It doesn't have to be degrees, it can be radians too, though. Right? Oh, yeah. It can be gradients, or it can be, there's all sorts of different ways to measure angles. We just use the two. <laughs> we'll just put angles. Angles go in. Okay, and what comes out? Well, it's kind of hard to say. You know, like ratios of side lengths is kind of what comes out. Okay. What, 
comes out of this function side. Signs of angles come out of this function. Signs and some angles come out. But if we're talking about the inverse sine, what comes out, or what goes, sorry, what goes into inverse sine? Sine lengths. Side lengths, the ratios of side lengths, right? Yeah. Not just, you don't just put seven in there. So ratios of side lengths. Ratios of side lengths go in. And what comes out? Angles. Angles come out. And that's why we put a theta there maybe a lot of times. Angles come out. And that's what we would expect of an inverse function. This goes reverse. We put angles in here, we get ratios out. Put ratios into the inverse sine function, get angles out. So if we're trying to figure out what an angle is, then we use our uh, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent function. Right, let me draw you another triangle. around this problem a little bit and use the sign to figure it out. But if we're just going to go real direct route, try to figure out this angle with these two sides, we would have to use the cosine. This would be adjacent of the hypotenuse. So the cosine of the angle equals 3 over 14, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Now we're going to find the angle. Side, obviously this is not set to scale. I mean, exactly draw the right triangle. This side is 3, this side is 14. But if this side were 13, this side were 14, you can just get a big angle, like close to 60, a smaller angle, close to 30. Pretty big. This is pretty short, and this is tall. Imagine like a ladder that's 14 feet long and it's only 3 feet away from the wall. It's pretty So, it's good to just think about what kind of an answer should I get that if I did something wrong and my answer seems weird, then I know that it's weird. So, wait, what, why is this angle 14 mm -hmm. I mean, radians, switch it. Let's try it again. 77 mm -hmm. So, it's See if we can get an intuition about the inverse cosine function. The inverse cosine function is theta equals the inverse cosine of x. Let's evaluate the inverse cosine. Um, what's the inverse cosine of 3, three over 6? Other angles that have 
cosines of root 3 over 2? Yes. So which one answer will we pick? 30. We will pick 30. In, in the end, the end of the story, we do pick 30. So if we take the inverse cosine of root 3 over 2, it'll be 30. The inverse cosine of uh, 1 half, what's the inverse cosine of 1 half? Not angle down here, and not some here, not negative angle, and not big, big angle, but just stop right there. 60, that would be our one output. Okay? Not for any universal, it must be that way reason, but just because that's what we want to have be our only answer. The inverse cosine we have. How about the inverse cosine, uh, sorry, I choose all of them. The inverse cosine of um, point five. Nine. Now hold on, don't press this in your calculators yet. I want you to think about it for just a second. What, what angle do you think you'll get? What, what angle will you be close to at least? Just make a guess where you are. So, close to 60, you think? Yeah. Six, will it be bigger than 60 or smaller than 60? Bigger. Be bigger than 60? Smaller. Smaller than 60? Well, it will be smaller than 60. Why is it going to be smaller than 60? What? Mm -hmm. Bigger than 60? <laughs> Smaller? 90, the cosine is 0. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. like you saw 0 is 1. 0 is 1. Okay. It gets one mm -hmm. This is going to be smaller than 60? Yeah. Probably going to be bigger than 60. It's going to be like, I mean, from what I've heard so far, it just needs to be between 0 and 90. Why is it bigger than 60 and not smaller than 60? Or whichever one you say. 60 is 1 half. 60 is the cosine of 0.5. And then 0.5 bigger than 1 half. So. So somewhere between. Somewhere between. 0.59 is somewhere between 1 half and 1 half. Yeah, that sounds good. So it sounds like that we should get an angle that's a little bit smaller than 60, somewhere between 45 and 60. Pretty yeah. specific. Yeah. Inverse yeah. cosine of 0.59, 53.84. Yeah. 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 How about the inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2? Negative 45? Let's look at negative 45. Here's negative 45. Oh. 2.5. 225. Any other angles have this cosine of negative 2 over 2? 135. Which one do we choose? Huh? 135. Why do you choose 135? Smaller. Nice. And it makes sense to go ahead and use those. They're right next to the other quadrants that we've already decided on. So, yeah. Sounds good. So over here, like this is where we'll find angles for the uh, inverse cosine. What kind of cosines do we find over here? Positive. Positive cosine. And over here? Negative. Positive cosine to one the co inverse cosine function will go from 0 to 90. So the whole thing ranges from 0 to 180. Well, what's the inverse cosine? Negative, 
cosine we're going to find is what? Well, minus one. So minus one. We'll find it wherever you find that. So right at 180 degrees. Right at 180 degrees. Anything that's more negative than negative one, like negative three or negative two, negative one. So the things that we can put into this function are limited, limited to somewhere between one and one, just like the sine function, the inverse sine. Okay. One more inverse trig function to talk about would be the inverse tangent, just like we talked about the inverse cosine. Where do its outputs come from, and are there any limits on what we can put into this function? Ooh. Beta equals the inverse tangent of x, some number. Um, it's the inverse tangent of one. Sine over the cosine. Is the unit circle right here? So what is that? Is the sine over the cosine? Where do you get the 45 degrees. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, when you divide something by itself, you get 1 to 45. Okay. Does this happen anywhere else? Do we get a tangent of 1 on any other angle? Two twenty-five, because if you would have two twenty-five, both sine and cosine are negative, so you take a negative divided by negative, you also get a positive. So which do you choose? Forty-five or two twenty-five? Like forty-five. We like that first quadrant, it has really familiar angles. Snugly worn angles that we like a lot. We've worked with them for a long time. So what tangents are we going to get in that first quadrant between 0 and 90? What kind of tangents? Yes, the inverse tangent of positive numbers will come from there. That's where we find those angles. Well, where are we going to get negative tangents? smaller if we were to take the so if we do go down here though we could go from yeah. negative 90 to 90 like we did the inverse side. So that one? Yeah, okay. This one? Okay. That's the one that all the other math conditions show as well. So we're good on that one. Okay. But just for conversation's sake, could we also choose that one? talk about why. What's the um, inverse tangent of zero? If we choose this range from zero to one eighty, what's the inverse tangent of zero? We can take sine over the cosine of zero. Zero and ninety? Yeah. Well, let's make sure. Um, take zero over one, that's zero, right? Sine over cosine. That's Zero divided by one, what's that? Zero. That's okay to do. If we go to 90, sine divided by cosine is one over zero. Undefined again. So 90 doesn't even have it. Okay. So that's it? It's, it's zero? What's that? 180 also has a change in zero. So 
If we choose from 0 to 180, we get this uh, double outputs when we do change at 0. Um, also, we just highlighted another problem. Like, we'll never get 90. Why would we include 90 in our outputs if 90 could never be an output? Because we just talked about how 90 doesn't have a tangent. Because the tangent of 90 is undefined. So we have a couple of problems where the inverse tangent of 0 could be 0 or 180, so we have this double output problem. And then right in the middle of all of our outputs, we have this guy that we can count. could possibly be an output. So, they seem like equal choices. This quadrant and this quadrant, or this quadrant and this quadrant. These, these turn out to be the right choice. Outputs, our list of outputs are going to come from uh, negative 90 to 90. How about this? Can I do that? Is it what equals to down there? No. Why not? Because it's only equal to 90 because 90 doesn't have tangent. 90 doesn't have tangent. Also, negative 90 for the same reason doesn't have tangent. So only strictly between negative and 90. How about the things we put into this function? Remember how we can only go from negative 1 to 1 for the sines and cosines? Is that true for tangent? Let's just now see. Why not? What? What? You could put in bigger, something bigger than 1 in the tangent, in the inverse tangent function? Yes. Why do you do that? Tangent is just the sine of a cosine, right? Or negative our ourselves. Uh, let's think of the tangent as the opposite over adjacent. Let's look at a triangle and see if the tangent of some angle of a triangle could be made to be bigger than one. Here's theta. First of all, it's be one. Opposite over opposite over adjacent turns out to be one. I'd be like, if this were five, then what would this side be? Five, right? Opposite over adjacent turns out to be one five divided by five is one. So uh, that was five, but this was four. Is there anything wrong with that? Does that violate anything you know about right triangles? No. No. You just got a ninety degree angle there. Fine. Side five, side four. That's fine. That angle just will be whatever it is. So that that tangent is bigger than one. It's five over four. How big can we get this ratio to be? Size, so we get a tangent of 10. Bigger than 90. Not even equal to 90. Okay, let's do that. Let's get our calculators. 
extended of what? Well, whatever. So we'll put all those zeros in there. That was huge tangent. So I'm about to press enter, but I want to prepare you. I don't want you to like have some kind of a attack, some kind where you just get shocked. Uh, I might if, when I press enter, it might say 90 degrees. Okay. Now that does not mean that this angle is 90 degrees. That's impossible. Okay. So if I hit if I hit this thing 90, 90, what does that mean? Rounded. The calculator basically just rounds up to 90. You probably can do that. Okay. It's just kind of like, there's like, it's not an angle that has, it's not a useful angle that has a tangent of whatever that number is. It's just, can't do it to that degree. It's just too big. Some numbers are too big or too small for the calculator to deal with. And there's an example of one. So, is there some limit on the x values that we can point to the tangent? Yes? No? Is, any, is there any x value too big? Is there any x value that is too small, like too far in the negative direction? No. Like, just to visualize it, we can draw a triangle. So it looks like one of the sides is negative because it goes down. You can do that. Okay. Uh, and just make this number big negative as we want. And make this one if you like. So some angle down here is going to have a tangent that is pretty negative. And an angle that is way down here is going to have a tangent that's even more negative. An angle, the closer you get to negative 90, the more and more negative that tangent is. Where we get our outputs for tangent, for inverse tangent. Uh, these ones right here will be for the inverse tangent of a negative tangent. Let's do another triangle. Um, So once we learn about new functions, we like learn uh, what kind of things we're going to put in there, what kind of things come out of those functions, and then we also like to involve those functions in equations and solve them using those functions. So we're going to solve some functions using inverse, we're going to solve some equations using the inverse tree. Ready for that? Sometimes when you solve equations, like in this case, we do it with sine and inverse sine 
uh, some problems come up and so we need to adjust them a little bit. Okay. Sometimes when we use inverse functions, fuck you can tell. Uh, and as an example, I'll use this one for a while. It just kind of has that same kind of a thing. Okay. So how do we get x by itself? And this is pretty divide by three. Divide by three. We do the inverse of multiplication to get x by itself. How about here? Times nine multiplied by nine. We're dividing by nine, so multiply by nine. And there we go. How do we get this guy by itself? The square root. The square root. Okay, so this is an example where something kind of funny happens. What's the square root of 14? Uh, let's change it to 16. What's the square root of 16? Four. Four. But then we remember that we're looking for some number, x, that you squared, multiplied by itself, and got 16. Is 4 the only number that can do that? Negative. We don't know which one it is, right? So it could be positive or negative. So that's an example of sometimes when we use those inverse functions, it's some funny things can happen. Okay? Does that make sense? Just something similar happens with inverse sign. Uh, but the same kind of an idea. We do the inverse multiplication, inverse of division, inverse of squaring, inverse of sign is. The inverse of sine is just the inverse sine. So we take the inverse sine of the sine, and that's like it's like canceling it out. Okay, we have to be careful with that. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Let's just move this over. We're going to take the inverse sine of this side too. Inverse sine of 0.63. Hold on, let's guess. Make a guess about how big this angle is. Smaller than 4. Mm -hmm. Smaller than 4? No, I mean smaller than 60. Smaller than 60. Why is it smaller than 60? Bigger than one half. We're talking about the sine here. So this is one half. It's bigger oh. than one half, so it should be bigger than thirty. Oh, sine. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Bigger than thirty. Should it be bigger than forty-five. Why not? Just kind of an educated guess. Yeah. How big is the square root of two over two? If you take the square root of two and divide it by two, how big a number do you get? Similar to this one, where we're looking for a number that can multiply by itself and make positive 16. In the original equation, which looked like this, the sine of some angle is 0.63. Well, it's just looking for an angle that has a sine of 0.63, right? How many angles are there that have a sine? Now, there's only one answer that we want to get. We only oh, want to get one answer right. if we take the inverse sine. But how many angles have a sine of course? It's an infinite number. Right. So, unfortunately, the answer to this is if, I, if you want to know what angle has a sine of 0.63, the answer is infinite. So, we have to come up with a way of recording all of those infinite possibilities. Okay. Uh, well, at 39.05 degrees, there's an angle that has a sine of 0.63, right? How can we find another angle that has a sine of 0.63? Just add 360. And how about add another 360? Add another. So add any number of 360s that you want. Okay. So theta could be equal to 39.05 plus 
260. Or plus 260 times 2. Or plus 260 times 3. Or plus 260 times 4. Yeah? 260x, and we actually use n. Because n represents an integer, like a whole number. Right? And we could also add 360 times negative 1. We can go the opposite direction. There, there's a bunch of those angles, but you know what? We didn't get. What about these guys over here? Didn't get any of those. Figure out what is this angle? That in 360 to this guy is not ever going to make us land right there. So let's start right there. That's another angle. And then we can do 360 on that one. What is that angle? How do we figure out what that angle is? How big is this? 39.05. 180 minus 39.05 gave us this angle right here. What's that angle going to have to do? Plus 360 times any number, any whole number, integer that you want to pick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 1, negative 7, negative 12, whatever. So there's our infinite answers. Take, start at 39.05 and go around 360 any number of times you want. Or start at 140.95 and go around 360 any number of times that you want. They may want, and this may start out by saying, find the angle that has a sine of 463, and that angle is between, let's say that angle is between, done most of the work already. We, we took the inverse sine of 0.63, we found that 39.05 has an angle, has a sine of 0.63. We specifically want to find an angle between 450 and 540. Right? We have to figure out kind of where that is. Right? So where is this range of angles? Where is 450 to 540? Here? This entire half of the circle? Where's where is uh where's four fifty? Four fifty is in the same place as what angle? Ninety. Yeah, if you add three sixty to ninety, you get five forty. Right. Or four fifty. And where's five forty? One eighty. So somewhere in between here, not between ninety and one eighty, between four fifty and five forty. We can find that angle between 450 and 540. It's over here, right? Do we know that an angle is between 90 and 180? It's not an angle, is it? 140.95. So this is 140.95. How are you going to find the angles? It's not 144.95, but between 450 and 540. And it has to be in the same place, right? That's time, 163. It has to be in the same place, right? Maybe it is? Yeah, I'm going to add 360 to it. 
360, then we will come back around and we'll be in the same place. It's a lot the same. That angle right here, that big old angle, all those degrees, will have the same sign, cosine. Coterminal angles have all the same stuff. So if you have 360, what angle is that? Is that between 450 and 540? It is. So let's see. We'll take this guy. That guy first. 140.95 plus 360. What was that again? Right? So most of your problems are going to be even simpler than that one. Most of them will just be like, well, not between 450 and 540. How about just between 90 and 180? So our answer in that case, what would be our answer in that case? Between 90 and 180. So we're looking for an angle that has a cosine of negative 0.27. So if we take the inverse cosine, 0.27, negative 0.27, we get 111.5. Yeah. 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 Let's take a look on our unit circle and think about the angle that we want is between 180 and 270. 111 is like right there. So if 111 is right there, and we're looking for an angle that's down in here, and it's the same cosine. Where is that angle? Just like eyeballing it. Where is that? Right here? 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 Is it here or is it here? Or down? Yeah, it's going to be like a mirror image of this angle down here. Because remember, we're going to have the same cosine. Cosine of the angle. Sine of the angle. X of the cosine. We want the same X. So this is 111.72, and we want to know how big this angle is. How do that? Subtract 90 from this. Yeah. Okay, what will that tell us? How big is that angle? This one? That, that's what you mean? That's true. If you take 111.72 minus 90 and it's that little guy, what are you going to do that little guy? This one? Yeah. Okay, we'll leave you do that information. What? Now, how are you going to figure out this angle right here? Oh. So you know how big this is now. Oh, it's a track cat from 270. Okay, that'll work. Other ideas? Isn't this just 111.72? Oh yeah, that's how big it is. So what if I start at 360 and then subtract 111.72?
common sense. I think your common sense is better than some formulaic, prescribed, step-by-step -step approach that you're trying to memorize. Okay. So the last thing is just a, a toe dip into 13.5, and that would be when we cross over to the world of map right triangles. How do we solve those challenges? How do we figure out how long those sides and how big those angles are? So, for example, 39, 47 degrees. all the stuff. I want you to figure out all the stuff about this triangle. Which are three things to find out. What would be the first thing you find out? Other angle. Other angle. You find it? 94. 94? Is it? Yeah. 94. Okay. Just trusting you. I didn't do the math. Just making this up. 94 degrees. The opposite side? Yeah. Is the side opposite? Huh? Is the side the opposite of what I thought? Oh, it's the side, yeah. So, okay. The side of 47, you're saying that's 14 over, that's the opposite of what I thought is? Yeah. Okay, no. Anybody know why not? I mean, that's an F. Yes, it's only the right triangle. It's something you have to remember. It's not a right triangle, right? It doesn't have an any degree anymore. So now all that stuff's out the window of the right triangle. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over opposite. Like all those ratios don't work anymore for non right triangles. Also, what else doesn't work anymore? The diagram theorem is for right triangles. So even if, even if this works, which we found X, then you could use the diagram theorem. Here's how we do it. Whenever the information that you're given, let me erase that to you. Just to show you what you're starting with. You were given three pieces of information, you gotta have three pieces of information to find all the pieces of the triangle. Okay? Sometimes there's one specific piece, it's not even that. If they gave you all three angles only, that triangle would be any size. So, so that one's up. But if I gave you three pieces of information, you could definitely figure out the triangle that, that fits that criteria. If you're given an angle and the side is opposite that angle, we're going to use a thing called the law of sides. The law of sides. The law of sides. The sine of A over A equals the sine of B also equals the sine of C over C. And that doesn't mean you have to use like two equations at once to have two equal signs. You only need to like, set one pair equal to another pair. But I can set the sine of A over A equal to B over B, or sine of C over C to the sine of A over A, or sine of B over B to sine of C over C. Like, any combination will work. The things that we need to know here are, like this is 94 degrees. And that's the biggest angle, and across from the biggest angle is the biggest side. The biggest angle and the biggest side both be called C. Uh, so it's some big C and little C. And then A and B are the middle. Because we can always just figure it out. So let's call this one B. This is big A, big A, big B, big C, these are angles. And little A, B, and C are the sides. A is going to be across from angle A, and side B is going to be across from angle A. We 
know angle B and side B. So we have like this whole fraction is all figured out. The sine of 47 over 14. What am I going to set that equal to? Got it? Got one side left. How are we going to figure out that third side? Do the same thing, but yeah. So now uh, we don't use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Um, and we probably want to use sine of B and B again. We can do A and A, except for this A is rounded. Exactly 14. So this is the exact values. If we set it up like we did before, we're going to wind up with C in the denominator. You know, the thing about fractions being equal to each other is if you think they're reciprocal, it's all to be true. That way we don't have to see the denominator. We do C over the sine of 94 equals 14 over the sine of 47. Those three things that I just circled in purple, those are the three things that I told you to start with. Uh, since it goes in this order, angle, angle, and then a side, we call that angle and side. Angle, then I move around the circle, I see another angle is a given, and then lastly it's a side. Another kind of triangle we can solve with the, the uh, law of sides would be an angle, side, angle, if I give you the side between the two angles. Very similar to this. But the one that we see here, this is an angle, angle, side. So the angle, angle, side, the angle, side, angle, these are the most straightforward. There are some other kinds of triangles, like there's other ways of giving you that information about a triangle that makes some funny things happen. You can get sometimes like, there's not even a triangle possible with that information. Sometimes there's only one triangle, sometimes there's only two triangles. Today, the problem today I give you on the homework is straightforward, as the numbers are going to go, no problem. Okay? So, we've got 13.4, we'll give you that first. And then just a little bit of 13.5. Page, just do the left side of the front page. Uh, one more. Here, this is for everybody over there. For you two. I'll get you one more. 
more fiction for four.